Hi, this is Katherine Doubly, the Answer Lady. In knitting, we make knit stitches and purl stitches, and you probably already know that these are the reverse of one another. A purl stitch is a backwards knit stitch, and on the back of a purl stitch, it looks just like a knit stitch, and the back of a knit stitch looks like a purl, because in fact it is. We've simply made the stitches facing the opposite directions. When hand knitting, we work the stitches one at a time, inserting the needle in one direction, grabbing the loop and pulling it through to make a knit stitch, inserting in the other direction, grabbing the loop and pulling it through to make the purl stitch. Typically, when frame knitting, we do something more or less like that. We'll do a simple wrap to make a knit stitch, loop the lower loop over the top loop, the knit stitch is completed, but we have to reverse the process to make the purl stitch and I have a little secret I don't care from purling on the loom it's not anywhere near the smooth comfortable action that the knitting is for me consequently I've come up with an alternate way to get the same exact effect and some of you may enjoy it too the fabric that I'm working on is composed of knit and purl stitches but I'm using both boards of a double knitting board to get them. The knit stitches are going to face one direction, the purl stitches are going to face the other, and that is what the difference will be. I'm going to form all the stitches using the same method, but because the stitches oppose each other on the boards, they're facing different directions. You see me wrapping across in this manner so as to get both knit and purl stitches in this row. We're going to call the board that I'm wrapping right this minute the knit one and the other board the purl one. But of course that's subjective because when I flip the fabric over, knits are purls and purls are knit. But that's to help us keep track. At each edge of this fabric is knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, one by one ribbing so as to prevent rolling edges. Now we'll knit every stitch over in the normal stockinette knit stitch manner. What I'm actually using here is the e-wrapped knit stitch. I'm doing that because I'm using bulky yarn on this board and it's a little bit thick for the board, but I want a dense fabric, however I don't want it to be too stiff. And the e-wrapped stitch is just a little bit looser and larger than any other version of a knit stitch. I do want you to understand every kind of knit stitch may be utilized with this technique as long as the stitches are on opposing boards and you face the exterior of the stitch the way you normally would with the smooth loop to the outside you will get knit and purl using this technique. Until this point I've been working all 15 center stitches on the knit board. Now I'm transferring the five of the 15 truly center stitches to the purl board so as to create the purl stitches that are part of this pattern. On the upcoming row, I will wrap them on the board that they now are on and that will make them be purl stitches. You may notice that as I transfer, I'm allowing the twist in the stitch to untwist. That creates the little bit of extra room that it makes it easier to get the stitches to cross the board and lay on the second side. It's not something that's obvious to most people when they look at the fabric that this has been done. So if you feel you need a little bit of extra ease, try that. The design I'm working consists of five rows with the five center stitches on the purl board, followed by four rows with the five center stitches joining the other stitches on the knit board and I move them back and forth at the end of every fifth row and then every fourth row. Here we're working the knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one edge to prevent rolling. The lower edge and the final edge of the scarf will also be knitted in this way but all the way across. You could also do the lower edge of a sweater in this manner. So a quick review, every stitch that is wrapped on the top board in the normal manner will be knitted off as a knit stitch and it will appear as a knit stitch on the fabric. 
every stitch wraps just as a knit stitch but on the lower board so it faces the opposite direction will be a purl stitch when viewed with reference to the knit side of the fabric. Here's an issue that confuses people. When hand knitting, you must knit an entire knit row followed by a purl row to get smooth stocking stitch or stockinette. The reason you have to do that is because every time you come to the end of the knitting on one needle and change needles, you flip the fabric so you're holding it in reverse. We never have to flip our fabric on a knitting loom or a knitting machine and that is why we don't have to purl every other row. Here is what the fabric looks like and I'll show you from the opposite side in a moment. At the lower edge I tried a diamond pattern and I'm not as pleased with that. I think this is working better with blocks of knit and purl stitches in this particular yarn than with singles which is what I used for the diamond. However, I do want you to be clear that you don't just have to make a pattern of squares. This one is kind of neat because it makes the fabric look as though a belt is woven in and out of slots, but there are many, many other things you can do with knitting and purling to make the contrasting height of stitches. Uh, you can make hearts, little houses, people shapes. The shapes do have to be simple to show up well, but experiment, have fun. I have wonderful books and patterns for loom knitters with all kinds of looms on my website. You might want to visit and look around. The main page is www.theanswerlady.com. Of course, that's all one word. Then in the index, scroll down to other kinds of knitting and select knitting boards or nifty knitters. And of course, I have lots more loom knitting movies on this very same channel. The Answer Lady Knits.